Hey everyone, this is TB Shores again. Um, this is, it's after midnight, so it is April the 21st, 2015. Uh, in our last video, we were talking about the harvest, the barley and the wheat, and how we see the church within that group. The barley is the bride, and the wheat are the backslidden. Um... What I want to touch on again, just for a second, is how we see that Pentecost was the time that the church age began. Okay, if we see that, uh, I was talking, let's see, I believe, I was discussing, right here, I've got it written down, um, what J.D. Farag had mentioned. He said, theoretically, we are still in the Feast of Pentecost. Because that is when the church age began, and the church age has not ended yet. So, according to what he's saying, and I do agree with him, because we are seeing um, we are seeing fulfillment of these feasts again. But what what we have neglected is that when we were looking at first Passover. At Passover, just you know, a couple of weeks ago or so, and I know the Lord has has told many of us we are in the season that Passover specifically is the season for the bride. Well, the Lord has been showing me about these harvests and about the church age ending, and it only makes sense that the church age began on Pentecost. Theoretically, we are still in Pentecost that the church age would end on Pentecost. And the Lord keeps taking me back to what he had spoke to me back on April the 4th, 2013. And it's simply this. Jesus and his disciples have two weeks. Well, we know the Feast of Pentecost, um, which is also known as Shavuot and the Feast of Weeks. Um, the Lord keeps taking me back to this. Jesus and his disciples have to the Feast of Weeks, I think is what he's pointing out here. Um, if that be the case, if that's what this means, that is pointing us back to Pentecost, meaning that, and see, it only makes sense, it just makes so much sense because he's talking about his disciples. And Pentecost began the church age with his disciples. And here we're talking about his disciples having to Pentecost again. Um, I hope y'all can see what I'm trying to say here because it's late at night and I'm sleepy and I really had hoped to present this better than what I am. But I, I know y'all can grasp what I'm saying here. Um, so I believe that what we're looking at is seeing the barley and the wheat still play out, which will bring us to Pentecost. And as several have pointed out, because the calendars are off and man has made a mess of keeping count of the days as God would keep count of the days. We cannot be for sure exactly when these days are falling, but we do know that the spring harvest begin with barley, goes into the wheat, the two end at Pentecost. Jesus, here God had spoken to me on April 4th, 2013. Jesus and his disciples have two weeks till Pentecost. Two also means until. So we have until the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost. It's speaking of his disciples. That is where the church age began is with his disciples. Now the thing we need to look at is, okay, we're looking at the barley and the wheat and how that ends at Pentecost. And how did we get Passover wrong when so many of us were we're hearing from the Lord that Passover was the time. Well, 
I believe the Lord is showing me how we had, um, how Passover is still the season for the bride, but it's the counting of the days. It's it's the days that line up with God's calendar that make the difference. Now, this is something I printed out. Oh, goodness, I guess a month, maybe. I'm not sure exactly, but about a month, I believe. Well, right here, actually, right there is the date. I printed it out March the 11th, 2015. So that was about, what, a little over, say, roughly three weeks before Passover came. And I had never given this any thought. And I was looking up information on the unleavened bread and Passover and the feast where the Lord had took me to Leviticus 23. And I was not thinking about this right here. Second Passover. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. I think quite a few of you are. But I don't even know why I printed this. Because I wasn't looking for anything on second Passover. Um, I run across it by accident. And for some reason, I felt like I needed to print it out. So I printed it out. And I keep it on a, a stack of things, information I print it out. And for some reason, I keep moving it back to the top of the stack. And you know, the Holy Spirit guides us to do things. And I believe that happens to be one of them. But here is another thing I want to point out to you. I was just showing you here. Let me back this up a bit. On April the 6th, it's when I did this. I watched J.D. JD Farag's uh, video. I did, did some notes on the unleavened bread. The Afikonian. Flipped the page. Made some notes on the church age. And Pentecost. And the wheat and the barley, the spring harvest. And then the very next day, this is where God had me flip my Bible open to. On April the 7th, the very next day, was Second Chronicles. And this was what was on the page. You know, you open your Bible up, you got two pages staring at you. So I always write down the scripture at the top of the left-hand page. And at the top of the right-hand page, which tells you everything in between is on those two pages. So I always write that down. Well, I was studying unleavened bread because God had brought me to the wafer. Okay. So my focus in my mind was the unleavened bread and Passover. And um, what went along with that? So when I opened my Bible, I came. Now, remember, I'm one of these. I close my eyes and I say, Lord, guide me. Flip my Bible open. And I come to Second Chronicles. And here we go. Second Chronicles 30, verse 10 through 32, 2. And the first thing that catches my eye is right here. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, seven days. I'm thinking, oh, okay. The Lord's brought me back to this. Um, i tell you what, I'm going to cut this video off right here because I need to look up some scripture and explain in a little more detail how I come about this. So just keep in mind, we have just, dis just discussed how Pentecost plays a big part in the church age ending as well as the barley and the wheat are what leads us up to Pentecost. And the barley is about the bride being taken and glorified, transformed, whatever you want to call it. And then she comes back to bring in these backslidden and lost. Um, God is showing me some amazing things. And I want y'all to know something. You know, I grew up my whole life. Uh, in the doctrine of one rapture, we're out of here and 
then all hell breaks loose. And, you know, there was more to it than that, but that's the gist of things. You know, there wasn't, uh, wasn't any knowledge of all these things that God has shown me in my mind. And, you know, finally I just asked the Lord, you show me, show me from your word what you want me to know, what I need to learn, what you would have me to understand. And he has opened a door to understanding like I could never have imagined. But my point in telling you that is these things that I point out to you that God shows me are not preconceived ideas I have in my mind. It is from opening my heart and my mind to the Lord that he has shown me the things that he has shown me. And it's not that I think I know everything because I know nothing without the Holy Spirit guiding me. Um, but I'm just trying to make the point that these are not things from me. They're not things that I learned in man's doctrine somewhere. These are things that in my heart, I know the Holy Spirit and my Heavenly Father have shown me and taught me. And I know it may vary off the doctrines that you may have learned yourself or beliefs that you have. But we all have to remember that the things that God is showing now are things that were only meant for now. We weren't meant to know it before. And we have to remember that and not scoff at people and what God has shown them. We we have to, to seek God. If, if you have a question about something I present, seek God on it. Or ask me, and I'll try to explain it best I can. But I just want you to know that what I present is not from anything that is preconceived within me. It's not from anything that has has come from previous learnings. These are things that I have opened my heart to and that God has shown me. And I feel very blessed for it. I have no idea why he chooses to speak to me the way he does and show me things the way he does. I just am very humbled by it. And in awe every time that he shows me something new. So what the things we're going to get into from here on out. The reason I'm saying all this, from here on out, it may surprise you. It may make you think, well, I've been listening to her for a while, but I don't know where she's coming from now. Always know that in my heart, I'm coming from what the Lord has shown me. And he is showing new things now. He showed me things this week, uh, and, the, and this lady that the Lord has put me with, Lou, the two of us together, the Lord helps us put the pieces together, and the things that he's showing us is it's going to be hard for a lot of people to grasp. So I want you from here on out to make sure that you pray for discernment, and you ask God to confirm and discern, help you discern, because he's showing us things that's only meant for now. And we can't turn away from it because it seems different. I'm going to shut this off now, and I just hope you keep all this in mind as we continue in the next, well, not just the next video, but where this is all going. There's a lot that God wants us to know. I love y'all. Bye-bye.